Welcome to Build Series City. My name is Danny Clayton. I'm your host. And today, joining me in the studio, a visionary director and a professional funny guy. The stars of The Other Guy. Now, before we introduce them properly, let's take a quick look at the trailer. Oh, AJ. Good to see you. What happened to the radio? Um, I kind of had a breakdown. Yeah, I found out my girlfriend was cheating on me with my best friend. Yeah, been there. Uh, she's pregnant now. Oh. It's probably his, but it could be mine, because there was a dip. Good to have the gang back together. He's too sorted your f out or what? Blackout most nights. Five months unemployment. I really need a job. We just need you to do a medical tomorrow. Stevie, I can't pass a drug test. I take drugs. Yeah, we've met. I didn't come here to this red uterus room to deliver you bad news. The breakdown, we think there's a show in it. What? It's a show based on the breakup with my ex. Here's where the just a dip coitus will happen. Put your legs in the middle. Jesus. What are your intentions with my boy? <laughs> Don't hurt him. I will kick you in the box so hard. You know how I'm making a TV show? It's kind of about my life. Listening to you talk about your ex isn't my idea of a good time. My dad has got this look. When I get that look, I know deep in my bones. Up, up. You are that quicksand. You bring everyone else down with you. Never to last, never I'm having a baby, AJ. Let it go. Are we just running away from our problems? I think we are. Cool, just checking. Can I still be friends with Charlie when you f things up? I'm not gonna f things up. Yeah, lol. Look at these Johnny Hoppers out here. I swear they're doing Morse code with hacky sack. Desi, they're not coppers. They're just bogans from another country with really hot accents. <laughs> Celebrate? Yeah. Stevie, he's off the clutch. Fast and the furious Sydney drift over here, son. <laughs> Welcome to the studio from the Stan Original, the other guy, Matt Card and Gracie Otto. How are you guys doing? So good. It's so uh, exciting. Every time I see the trailer, I feel excited for the yeah. show coming out. Does it make you proud? Yeah. Way, like, really proud. And it's difficult to say that you feel proud about your work sometimes when you're a creative, especially when you're a comedian because you're supposed to be all um, down on yourself and, uh, oh, well, yeah, I'm not really, I uh, guess if you like it, it's okay. But, mm. like, I'm really proud of yeah. that. Because it was really hard work to put together. So to see it all come together and finally happen, I'm like, yeah, this is exciting. Mm. And I think people will like it. So what's not to be proud of? Of course. And I mean, at the uh, upfronts recently, uh, I think you said that you said that this season was a little bit harder. What made it harder? Um, I think it was, I mean, I didn't, I didn't necessarily think it was harder more so that we we went harder we mm. went harder on some of the ideas we we pushed the boundaries a bit further we elevated some of the stakes it, it, we just made it a really we put we put ourselves out there a bit more mm. and i think that that's what's always harder is to sort of when you when you put more effort in mm. then you, you hope that it all pays off and i really think that that's happened brilliant now i want to step away from the other guy just for a moment because um i really wanted to talk about you gracie um in particular your uh, just your direction and your and your style uh, one thing i think is just a real talent of yours is that you can put a lot of like feeling and, and tone into the simplest of, of, of pieces of, of video uh, a lot of your commercial work is truly ins inspiring and so when you're approaching something like clothes or underwear or, or, or a brand, <laughs> how do you bring a new perspective to it? How do you bring that tonality to it when it's something that's been done a hundred times before? Um, I mean, well, thanks for the compliment. It's very kind of you. It was really nice, isn't it? Yeah. You're, you're looking at him like... Sh you're Hell, like I was like, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> shut up. I'm not good at having compliments. Um... <laughs> I guess I, you know, for me, I like things to be stylish and fashionable. I, with, especially with the show, I wanted to. Um, it was really important to have really colourful locations and outfits and cool cars and kind of elevating that sense of it. Because I mm. guess coming in as a director on the second season, the advantage for me was that the characters are quite well shaped, and you know they obviously had different areas where they wanted to go with the characters. But um, 
it's like I think yeah, it's probably easier coming on to direct season two than season one. I imagine I've never mm. directed uh, the first season of something before, um, but. Yeah, for me it was kind of like giving like people, you know, like Harriet's character, like giving them fashion moments in it and making it all, yeah, colourful and to, ca to have the comedy, but it still had to fit into that Sydney narrative. Mm. And I mean, when you first met, uh, can you describe that experience? <laughs> How did you know that this was the right team? Well, that sounds like a relationship yeah, yeah, question. I'm no, sorry. But I, mean, <laughs> I thought I just was going to a go see a meeting. Mm. So yeah, tell me. I mean, Whenever it's I it's it is a bit of a relationship question because you have to spend for a show like this, mm. we're spending. 12 hours a day with each other like literally yeah. it is me and Gracie in every scene kind of thing um, and you are going to end up having really fun moments you're going to have arguments you, like it's just you know you're going to have a total, all the things that a relationship has yeah. um, except for the obvious stuff and so we w held a meeting um, because we were interviewing about four different directors uh, on this particular day and it's, it's, yeah, you know, th th all, all the other three directors were great in their mm. own right, but, you know, there's something that clicks. Mm. For me, for me, choosing a director was, it's, it's, I, and this is going to sound really bad, but I don't even really look at their work that much. <laughs> Awesome. I just kind of, awesome. I kind of just figure out what sort of person they are. Is that I really don't know casting though. I never, I hate people auditioning. Like I usually meet a girl and I'm like, she's cool. I'd like to put her in something or that yeah. person. Because I know when I saw audition, I was so bad I, at auditioning. I'm the worst auditioner. But I was really good on set. Like once I got the job, I'm, I'm great. But I never get the jobs because I'm not good at auditions. Yeah. So the only two <laughs> films I did were offers. <laughs> Yeah, wow. So. And yeah, and I mean, like, I mean, I would watch, I like, I'd watch whatever the link I got sent and be like, cool, it doesn't mm. look shit, you know, that's yeah. the, oh, sorry, bad, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to. Oh, you can say shit. So anyways, yeah, but, you know, like, I would say, you know, you look at it and make sure that they know how to direct stuff, mm. but then the most important thing is what are, what is this going to feel like? Mm. Because it's not just about... It's not just about what the show is going to look like, but how is it going to feel? Like as soon as you, as soon as Gracie walks in, you could see, like her that she had a really cool style about her, and she could use that style to transform characters that say I didn't know what the style was going to be like. Mm. You know, Claudia Carvin's character had was a new addition to this season, so I didn't know what she looked like, mm. but. Um, you know, Gracie can suddenly go, oh, this is the sort of place that she would work. This is the room it's going to look like. This is what she's going to dress like. Th like and and that, that, that to me is really exciting to have someone to, to really add the visual aspect to it all. So, yeah, it was instantly, as soon as we talked for an hour... Yeah, I thought it was. I honestly thought it was a meeting, and then I went into Stan, and I remember I took a Milko because they had Milkos um, <laughs> from the thing, and I was going to New York that night to shoot an ad, and then I got an email saying I got it because I was like, if I get it, I'm gonna eat the Milko in my bag. <laughs> and I ate the Milko, and then I went back to bed. I texted my mom, and then I was like, there's no time to sleep till July. Okay. And then I got up and was like, yeah. That's it. It's on. <laughs> yeah. So one of the things we've learned from this is that you are a big Milko fan. <laughs> Love Milko, yeah. 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 You don't like, see him that often no. anymore. Oh, they're rare. If, if you want him, get a yeah. Stan headquarters <laughs> yeah. in the city. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I should love to arrange a meeting sometimes. So I know there's someone from Stan <laughs> is here. Halfway through your pitch, just yeah. pockets it's burst open. Like, Milko's yeah, I don't out. have a show idea. You're like Marge from the um, from the candy <laughs> fair when she gets home. <laughs> <laughs> Look, um, <laughs> I do want to talk to you about um, characters. Uh, again, something that's really appealing about this show is that it feels authentic with the characters. Sometimes it's like you're not even watching people acting. It's just like they're, they're living in, in the scenes. Uh, when it came to choosing the, the cast, uh, I mean, what kind of process did you go to, to to make sure that they were what you had in mind? I think there's been there's three different journeys because I, I can speak on, say, behalf of... Um, Harriet. Harriet playing Stevie. <laughs> her name's Harriet. <laughs> yeah, I spent all morning with her and I've forgotten. Um, no, Harriet was the first audition tape that we saw for Stevie. This is season one. Mm. So Gracie wasn't on board yet and, and um, we, you know, we knew that there was like the most important kind of character. Of course. Uh, of the season to cast and the very first tape we saw was Harriet Dyer. And she told us later on that she was very hungover um, when she did the tape. 
and that works for the character. Mm. Um, and she just nailed it. We literally we watched it and we were like, oh, well, that's that's it. Mm. That's her. And there was, you know, you almost just watched the other tapes just just out of politeness. Mm. But the, she just nailed it so well. And we, she, there was no callbacks or anything like that. We were like, well, call her agent and let's make it happen now. Right. So we didn't want to miss out on Harriet. The other two are completely different. Um, Claudia, I wrote the character with her in mind. Wow. And yeah, because the character was called Claudia and we changed it to Miranda. So <laughs> yeah. that'd be weird. <laughs> yeah, we didn't want but, And also because there's so much chat about, you know, the parallels between my life and and uh, the show, mm. it, it wouldn't have been appropriate for Claudia to be playing someone called Claudia and then people thinking that it's actually it's Claudia. It's really hard actually to Claudia. think of names. I, it was actually my sister's name in the end, but we are trying to think of names one day. Yeah. And then you thought of some name, but that's actually – Charlie – it was like this longer version of Charlie. Mm. They were like, oh, oh, Charlotte. Yeah, Charlotte. We're gonna call yeah, we're Charlotte. Like, oh, Charlotte. Charlotte, perfect. They were like, oh, that's Charlie. Mm. <laughs> I've got um, a bunch if you need help. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, I've had to name a kid recently and that was very <laughs> difficult. Yeah, you really realise how well, many people you hate. What was the shortlist, by the way, Matt? Uh, I uh, wanted to call – okay, so we didn't know if it was a boy or a girl. So if it was a boy, because boys are more difficult to name, I think, because there are way more – Dickhead boys out there. Oh, true. So, <laughs> so you went with. <laughs> yeah. So you're really difficult to find one that hasn't pissed you uh, off. Adolf? Or done. No, no, yeah, no. Exactly. Can't go with that off. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> Start. No. Um, yeah. So uh, I wanted to call he- him uh, Marvin, right? Oh, the Martian. <laughs> yeah, so we, well, yeah. yeah, if you want to think of it like that. Um, my partner wanted to call him Louis, cause that, but I, so I was like, that's a royal name and there's going to be lots of Louis then. Mm. Um, and so I, I thought we could meet in the middle and call him Leuven. Mm. But uh, well, Leuven, well, really? if I ever have a baby, I want to call it Level. Level, because Level backwards is Level, and then the V's the middle bit, and then it'd be Otto. Whoa. So it'd be Level Otto. <laughs> Otto Level. <laughs> Both Otto palindrome. Yeah, palindrome. Middle oh wow! Name, Would like, they be professional gamer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but and I think it could be like a boy, girl, whatever mm. they felt like. Name. Yeah. Fair it's been very modern. Oh, I mean, I'm, I'm all for it. <laughs> and then with like a really old, like Ronald or something in the yeah. middle, you know. <laughs> Ronald. <laughs> Level Ronald Otto. Yeah, well, I, I guess like my name's Ronald. Yeah, so like Ronald or like. You guys, like you guys are super 30s. weird, by the oh, way. This this is, uh, <laughs> yeah, this is going to places like I didn't know. My grandma's name's Bessie and yeah. Bessie and Bob. <laughs> like those names aren't coming back. No one's calling the baby Bob. Yeah. Bob yeah, that's a Bob Irwin. Bob's also yeah. Bob yeah. Um, <laughs> um, okay, yeah, sorry. Oh, back, back on this. Show. Back on this. Um, Claudia. Yeah, so we wrote the character for Claudia. Yeah. Um, with Claudia in mind. We both happen to be friends with Claudia. You're probably, yeah. you'd known her mm. longer than me. Yeah, ish. And right. then yeah. it was just a matter of just praying that she would want to do it, which sure. is a big risk when you. You know, you put yourself out there trying to, like, going, hey, look, we really, really want you to be in this show. Yeah. Um, and she read it and liked it. It was really exciting. Yeah. yeah. Talented, beautiful women uh, seems to be uh, quite a, a feature of this series. I mean, uh, Amali Golden, uh, you got Aaron McNaught, Miss Universe in this season, uh, which we saw in the trailer. Uh, <laughs> Aaron McNaught. Uh, doing a sex scene with uh, AJ. Uh, yeah. That's interesting. Uh, how was filming a sex scene with a Miss Universe? Well, it's more about the whole point of that scene is how bad it is to film a sex scene. Because <laughs> you, if you've never done it before, it is the most sterile, awkward thing to do. Because it's supposed to be hot. Yeah. You know, it's supposed to be, you're supposed to genuinely f- feel or want to portray chemistry and sexual tension and fire you know you want people at home to be like whoa that's hot yeah you know what i mean but like Which you're looks fast you're yeah. trying to do it and and you know you you're like your dick's just in this little bag <laughs> and like they've got all these bits all sticky taped all over them also and it would be weird for erin because she for the guest roles they just turn up in the morning Exactly. She didn't know me before. You've, you've never we met Erin. No. I knew her, but I was like, "Hey, like it's all good." Like, um, so we just take yeah. your robe off, and yeah. um, we all know each other on set, you know. But then, but then you're pretending to have, um, you oh, know, what sex, are you doing, man? And there's like, <laughs> and there's like, you know, you're supposed to be having sex there, and there's just like a guy with a <laughs> microphone behind you. Just like tracking every single thrust, and you're just like, so the whole point of it, the whole point of it was to show how 
awkward sex scenes are. Mm. So it wasn't sexy at all. We had double the crew because it was inside the show being wow. made. So we had then <laughs> some students who were the boom and then the real boom and then the camera and the real camera. So there was a lot of people in the room. Yeah, there was heaps of people. It was like, close your eyes, kids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, that was – and that was the most exposing sort of scene that I've had to do. That was my favourite direction, asking him to run down the stairs but, mm. like, give it some sideways bounce. You know? Oh, my god! Because I'm, I'm <laughs> nude with the sock on yeah. and then so – yeah, they're like, no, it'd be great if you could get a bit more, you know, wriggle. Of the, you know, oh, like, my God. <laughs> suddenly you're running downstairs and bits are jiggling all over the place. And Look, I didn't anticipate uh, that I would. And it fell off once as well. It oh. fell off once when <laughs> in, a, in a sex scene with Charlie. But yeah, Lily Sullivan. Know, yeah, because it was on the bed, but uh. my cinematographer was like, yeah, yeah, we'll go again. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I didn't anticipate that I would go here, but um, they're saying go that there, in yeah. Hollywood that there is, it's it's a time for more penis in, in comedy and in and, and, and video. Oh, yeah. yeah. Because we've been saturated with a lot of boob. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and also because we don't look at enough penises. No. Like if someone sends you a dick pic as a girl, <sighs> you go like that. Even if you're by yourself, if you're mm. in the bar and you're like, oh, I won't. <laughs> Better not look at it. You know what I mean? <laughs> because we're so not used to looking at it, and it's okay. It's like when people say not allowed to masturbate, like it's okay or whatever. Mm. But people think it's not okay to look at penises, mm -hmm. and so you're conditioned to just be like, oh. yeah, yeah. Same, same how I react. Set, you know? yeah, when I get sec <laughs> sent dick fix, I'm just like, you know. So. Well, that's why there's no. Well, I, I feel like that's why there's no nudity, mm. full nudity in yep. our show. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Like I wouldn't want. But would you consider it? Would you consider getting your wang? I would in, consider. Is this it something you have to talk to Stan about? Absolutely. Uh, we had no. We had a um a um sex. What what's what would her job be? Uh, it it, it was a th an intimacy intimacy coach coach. Wow. Yeah, and that was really interesting. It was actually really good because I'd never directed a sex scene, and you know, there's a certain like in all seriousness of it, there's a certain thing that becomes almost like a dance so that you know exactly what's going to happen. So if you're a girl and someone's going to kiss you, they're not going to like then just grab your boob on the day mm. or whatever. And then there's the other side when you're doing it, which is quite funny because when you, <laughs> you know, I'm like, Matt, is that good for you? Does that, does that work? <laughs> like, could you just show me those thrusts again? Oh. And I'm there with a the camera, like on my iPhone, just being like, I'm just getting angles with like storyboarding. <laughs> I'm not... You know, keeping this for home Keeping use. this. And there was a bit, I think, when <laughs> Lily had, you know, they were doing something and I had to make sure I couldn't see anything. So then I was like, oh, yeah. I can't. I can just see. Yeah, I can just see a hand. That's good. Wow. And then you go home and you're like, you, you know, parents are like, how was your day? Like, good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, like, because I mean, in the first season when we did um, the sex scenes, it was very much in the old school way where we didn't have an int intimacy coach, mm -hmm. and you know, the actors just say, um, okay, so just letting you know, here, fine. Yeah. Bum. Okay. <laughs> do not grab here. And that's like that. Those are the rules, but do you and that's just Claudia what you do. Joke to you, we had Claudia and you had to kiss, and then I said, "Oh, you know, like how would you?" And, and Claudia goes, "Well, normally I just grab his crutch and shove my tongue down." <laughs> jokes, and we were like, "But is it jokes?" <laughs> and then she was like, "Yeah, jokes." And I was like, "Okay, so it would just be no tongue. Is that correct?" <laughs> like, write that down. Because, because. <laughs> Because it best is chat, but, no, but suddenly, <laughs> suddenly, because you don't think about it, but then on the script, because the script says they are um, embracing passionately or hot or something like that, and so the intimacy coach is like, "So what is a passionate embrace for you? What is because like what the script said they are in the throes of yeah, you deep it. passionate <laughs> sex. No, Casey yeah. Anning wrote that episode, okay. <laughs> um, and it's really good sex. They're in the middle of really good sex. It's yeah. like the first line of the episode. That's right. She asked you what. What well, is really good sex? And suddenly you're like, um, I don't know. When like, uh, yeah, um, yeah. I what don't like cry what? at the end of it. Like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and also, I had Carlin who was doing continuity with me, just just sitting next to me, taking notes the whole time. Continuity just, in a sex yeah, scene. How does that work? Yeah. Um, yeah. So after directing that particular scene, do you think you know what it's like to have sex with Matt O'Kine? <laughs> um, my notes for Matt. Would be more in the kissing aspect. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm a terrible kisser, apparently. Oh, yeah. It's no, hard, it's just brutal. that, like, you know, like on camera, unfortunately, people look fatter on camera than they do in real life. And so when you're kissing, it's faster than it might feel. 
Mm. So I was kissing really fast. Yeah, but I've heard my, that about you actually. My defense, <laughs> yeah, old speedy gone smoocher or whatever. Also, how do you know? Because if you date someone for a long time, you get in the rhythm of kissing someone in a certain but way. But I and don't then kiss normally. Like I don't kiss like that. I was kissing for camera. I was yeah. kissing comedically. Okay, don't worry, man. It's it's okay. I was it's kissing right. for lols. Look, Matt, I'm Lull. sure you're a great kisser. I'm a nice regular I, speed kisser. <laughs> Sure. I'll prove everyone here yeah. today. Does anyone want to volunteer? Everyone gets uh, one on the way out. <laughs> um, gosh. Um, what do you think Example thinks um, about, uh, of course, Example being the yeah. internationally yeah. renowned uh, hip hop well, artist? Aaron said the other day that he was cool with it. Yeah, he was. I mean, I think that it was a little bit, it's, it's always tough for anyone. It was tough for my partner when you, you know, um, know that your partner's going to go off and mm. simulate sex with. This is someone that you don't really know. You don't know and they don't know. Did you meet With Example? 50 people? Yeah, I mean, you, we you, met. You've, we, you've we, interviewed we've, Example. No, I never interviewed him, but we hung out recently in Brisbane and it was great. Like, we, we all hung out. I, I, I love Example. Mm. I love his work before um, I knew Aaron and, and uh, it's been actually a really good friendship to have met those guys. Mm. Um, albeit it is a little strange that <laughs> that's, that's strange, happened. Yeah. But, um, but, yeah, no, my partner was... was Uncomfortable when she kind of found out. Settle down, Gracie. <laughs> <laughs> what? You, you think it's funny that you all hung out together uh, post sex scene? <laughs> I mean, was that like friends? Like we we have friendship. developed a bit of a friendship. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, whatever. Um, Dude, but it's yeah. funny. It's like I wanted to talk about so many things to yeah, do with this show, and we haven't we talked about barely, yeah. We barely left the sex scenes. <laughs> um, Look, I really want to touch on uh, my favourite character from uh, the show, which is Christian Van Buren from um, yes. you know, the Bondi <laughs> Hipsters, yes. Desi. Um, are we going to get more of him in season two? Um, is that because he was so awesome in the first season? Oh, yeah, without a shadow of a doubt. I mean, to be able to give him more, to be able to give Stevie more, that's one of the best things and most exciting things about doing season two. He's so so funny and he mm. comes up with some stuff like he's like oh i'm just gonna chuck a few lines on at the end of this scene and it just it's the most whack stuff i can't like that like my favorite line in the whole trailer is him going look at these johnny hoppers out here i bet they're doing morse code with the hacky sack <laughs> what is that like who <laughs> says that it's so funny though i just love it and he was so <laughs> nice as well because i actually think for me, for some reason, I hadn't met him. He didn't come to the table read. So I, hadn't, I wasn't going to meet him until the day he was on set. Mm. Um, and I was like, oh, no, he's like a director. Like he, you know, I just was like, oh, another director like on set kind of thing. But he was so nice and cool and wanted to like, you mm. know, watch everything and really supportive. And yeah, I was just like, you're a legend. Yeah. And the best person to do ADR. Yeah. Like we had to get rid of something. He had to sync up one bit of the line and then walk over to the look outside the window and sync up the last bit. And I think he did like 20 different versions. He's like, let me just do another one. Let me just – and they were just all like <laughs> yeah. gold. And you're yeah. like, yeah, you're pretty funny. Yeah, some of his lines, yeah. He's just he's, – and he, he is a good – and he comes up with ideas. You know, he comes – he finished set and he'd be like oh, he's sending me messages going, oh, man, I reckon Desi could do this in season mm. three and this in season – and it, and they're all just on point. I think because he gets – the, that world so yeah. well he's part of that sure and, sort of and one of the things that he he said which i thought was like bang on and one of the reasons why he says that he liked playing uh, desi was that it felt like a realistic uh, drug dealer you know because when we see drug dealers in movies and television shows they're like you know really scummy <laughs> blokes they're really <laughs> awful they're punks but this guy is just like a really <laughs> friendly dude yeah. who wants to get his friends yeah. high. Yeah, exactly. He's and the, it felt he's it's the first <laughs> time I think you know you watch a drug dealer and go, oh, what a great guy. Yeah. He was also up for wearing a plastic um, rain jacket see-through pantsuit. <laughs> I was like, do you reckon you could wear that? And mm. he's like, yeah, totally. Like, yeah, <laughs> got that yeah. Through. You, you got a. Th you, it's a good point about the 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 like it's the. Not nerd drug dealer, but yeah, it's not like the gangster or anything like that. Yeah. He's just, he's like, he's just the guy that deals occasionally to his friends mm. or, you know, a little bit outside of that. Yeah. But, but um, yeah, yeah, he's great. He's so, great. I mean, I need to discuss the, the very meta like qualities of this whole show. Mm. I mean, it, obviously, uh, you know, the show's about a radio presenter who has gone through this traumatic breakup. Then the second season, the 
AJ gets himself a television deal and turns his like, okay, we can see that there is definitely some patterns. Is In the third season, AJ goes on Build. On Build, does an interview. It's interviewed by. <laughs> I hope it's a good interview. Um, yeah, what will happen in season oh, three? Who Gosh. knows? Look, um, it, it is extremely meta. At one stage, we were filming a scene um, where we were celebrating the after party of the filming of the show, within the show. And my friend, who is kind of like my best female bud in real life, we hung out a lot during the time when I personally went through a breakup and just got up to a lot of dumb stuff. Um, She came down to Sydney to be an extra in that scene. (laughs) And the scene is where Stevie meets... Actress who plays her in the show, within the show. And the actress that plays her in the show, within the show, is actually Harriet Dyer's sister, Madeline. You lost so, me about six <laughs> sentences <laughs> ago. So at one stage we had my best female friend in the, in the background of my character's <laughs> after party <laughs> alongside his best female friend who was meeting the actress playing my character in the show. Is, is anyone <laughs> following this? <laughs> it got really Put confusing. your hand up if you understand. Okay, we got but, one person. But I, I, had a, I had a real freak out at one stage because we, had you, we did do an interview scene very similar to this in the show and I, and I think I probably did drove people's, like, did their heads in mm. because... The question became, what are the viewers at home going to be thinking that this is a scene of? Are they going to think that this is a scene within a television show mm. that they're watching? Or is this us, a fly on the wall of an interview program? So um, it, was, it was a really com- complicated thing. And so mm. I remember asking, every, like I was, I was asking lighting, like, how are we going to make sure that this doesn't look like a TV show but still looks like a TV show so that the audience knows that they're not watching what the audience within our show is watching? Does that make any sense either? Absolutely I'm giving none. up. You know yeah, what? Whatever. Um, I remember. It was hard. Yeah, yeah. It was really hard. Is it dangerous? You know? But it, like, how much do you harvest? So if we go grab a beer and we have a great laugh about something mm. – are you like? Can you get just, to play an extra? Are you, okay. <laughs> no, I mean <laughs> this is this is me asking. Can I be an extra? It's a, it's it's you use you use what you know, and you know it's not like every conversation turns into content for me. Mm. It's like it's like I, the tiniest thing might turn into something huge, mm. or you might use a really big thing in just a tiny little way. You're you you know I'm sitting at a pub staring out the window, and a guy with a um, on a bike with those Ugh. plasticky things yeah. Wait, goes what are past. Those plasticky things? They're to stop magpies going yeah. in. Oh. Anyway, so suddenly you go, oh, that's visually interesting. Mm. How can I use that in a scene? So then you think, well, is someone going to get chased by magpies? Is that actually funny? Or is it funnier if Desi does a whole scene with a bicycle helmet on his head and those things sticking up, but he's really angry at Stevie about something, mm. but he's just come in from, <laughs> you know, riding his bike. Now that doesn't happen in season two, but that I wish it good, did. Yeah. Oh, that's funny, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's just using stuff like that. That's just how you sort of interpret the world. And so mm. people are like, oh, is this based on your life or anything? It's like, no, it's not. But it is. And, but some of the things are big and some of the things are mm. tiny, you know. So yeah. you just you just use whatever and see make it all fit into a little Jenga puzzle. So just a yes or no, has Briggs in real life ever beat you in the face? <laughs> no, that was Damn a combination it. of two. <laughs> Someone did actually um, punch me in the face in Brisbane really, really hard one night. I still can't close my jaw properly of that. And that's because I was well, I'd just done an ad for McDonald's <laughs> and I was really, really wasted. And I just had a big fight with my girlfriend and I was just like, I was really like, I was just upset. Mm. And um, and I'd been on this ad where these, um, all I had to do was, was eat, some nuggets. eat, yeah, eat chicken, <laughs> but a chicken burger. Be like, chicken. That's what I said <laughs> in the ad. Anyway, as I was walking across the road, this guy was like, oi, bro, the burgers are better at Hungry Jack's. 
right? And um, I just lost it. I was like, screw you, you don't know anything. And then, and then I just was yelling at him, like just screaming at him right in his face. And then, <laughs> and then the next thing I knew, I, I was like, I woke up on the concrete and my friend was like, brah, you got knocked out, son. <laughs> and you know what's annoying as well? I know, like we got posters and billboards and stuff all around this thing right yeah. here. And, you know, that dude, I'm sure, <laughs> like, every yeah, day I yeah, bus yeah. will pass him and be like, yeah. man, I smashed that dude. Yeah. He was out cold. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, do people draw moustaches and stuff on these? <laughs> never. I haven't seen any Cla- dick and balls yet. Because Claudia does mm. have to oh, yeah. get rid of some defacing on a post. So that would be quite meta. Yeah, that would be we too. Got her, mm. Yeah, someone had drawn on her. I hope this happens. Now, we do have some Q&As from people watching. Um, so uh, we've got the first one directed at you, Gracie. Uh, someone said they love the creative for Queendom. Uh, this is, of course, the, oh, right. the Bonds yep. uh, commercial with all the women running through the forest. In their underwear. Yep. In their underwear, <laughs> wielding axes and just generally being boss. Um, what was the brief that you got? Um, and is it empowering uh, to make an underwear ad, um, which is this different and uh, rare? Yeah, I mean, the Bonds, I did three Bonds ads and the Bonds ads were incredible because the idea from the creatives, who was the the people who wrote the ad and came up with the kind of creative brief, it was so good and they really kind of pushed me to make it great. And I think a lot of people sometimes think that, you know, the TVC is just like the director did that TVC, but they, you know, they spent a year in research, like Mm. coming up with so many ideas and throwing lots of things. So I just loved working with them because I thought the creators on that job were amazing and it was really there's so many ads now with like women when it things become a bit tokenism like oh we've got to have you know this in it we've got to have this to hit this demographic and becomes a bit ticking boxing kind of thing where it should just be like let's cast a girl like they really built the characters into the story so that you know it did cross all those kind of things but in a Mm. Cool way. Yeah. Yep. I don't know if I it's, it, it's a pretty strong ad, I'll yeah, say it's that. Great. I mean, when I say yeah. that, that's like, you know, when, when we're t- t- figuring out whether Gracie was good for the for the for for our show, I mean, that's like the you watch an ad like that and you're like, oh, mm. this person's amazing at what they do, you know? So mm. I think oh, people nice. love it. Um, this next one's for you, Matt. Uh, how did your acting journey start? Was it oh, something you'd always know. wanted to do, um, so uh, even while in radio? <laughs> Some oh, dolphins, mate, wasn't it? I, yeah, <laughs> I, was, I went to drama school. I, 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 I am an actor, like a university degree, Bachelor of Fine Arts acting um, major. So uh, I've always wanted to do acting. I was doing acting before I was doing stand-up comedy, which is what led to eventually to the radio. Mm. But yeah, then I was, a, then I was a, well, my first role, actually my first role is as policeman in a, in a movie called See no evil. No name. Featuring just, Kane. Yeah, yeah policeman. Was Look, it policeman when, one? When or your two? character role, <laughs> when your character name is a job title, <laughs> you know things ain't great. But um, but I step out of the vehicle and I say, uh, nothing to see here, guys, move away, move away, or something like that. Um, and that was directed by this this old porn director, and it starred a WWE film um, wrestler Kane. Right, so I play policeman. Originally, it was policeman number three. And now it's just policeman. Ooh, um, move and, on up. And then my next role was in Aquamarine, where I play um, the best friend of the main character. And I have one line in that movie. And originally, the line was, "Come on, dude, we gotta go. Lobster Bay's going off right now." Um, <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> you, you don't surf. <laughs> Come on, man, let's go. Uh, it was me and Lincoln Lewis and uh, and a couple of other dudes in this Jeep and we rock up. Come on, bro. Uh, but then my I'm pretty sure my line got dubbed over by someone else. So, um, oh, no. So, yeah, that's embarrassing when you get the friends around to watch your big Hollywood debut and suddenly it's like, Hey, come on, man. Go get in the car. <laughs> God damn it. Um, then, uh, and then, yeah, and then I became... Um, I did the, the mermaid double. So I went from Aquamarine to H2O. I played Laurie in H2O, which is a dolphin trainer. Um, and, and uh, yeah, I did two seasons of that very briefly. That's, that is still on TV. That is on every weekend. Yep. Someone will message me. I've had friends in Holland message me because it, you know, it's, it's like it's one of the biggest shows so, oh, so big that Australia's made. Yeah. Um, so people make fun of it, but I'm like, yeah, I, you know, it was, it was my start. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I, I think know. I think I sent you a photo of you on it once because I was just howling with laughter. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's very funny. Um, <laughs> this next one's for you, Gracie. Um, you've done shorts, features, and TV, and so so much more. But what's your dream project to direct, and when can we see more? Um, 
actually, the project I'm working on at the moment has been great. It's a feature documentary about a recording studio in the 1980s in the Caribbean. Of course. So I've been going around interviewing old rock stars. So that's been the Fifth Beatle, I believe. Fun. Yeah. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about this project? Um, it's an Australian film and my producer Cody Greenwood, her mum grew up on the island of Montserrat in, um, back in the day and kind of, and George Martin, who was the Beatles producer, set up a recording studio where everyone from the Stones, Elton John, everyone came to kind of record there and then, um, it was on an island that had a volcano. So. Mm. Yeah. Very fascinating. Like, then that's going to come out when do you think? Uh, yeah. next year. Okay. Yeah. Brilliant. Um, so, who was the funniest person on set? Someone has asked. We're gonna have to be snappy because, gosh, <laughs> we're running out of time. Um, <laughs> um, Harriet, I, I think Harriet's so Harriet. so funny. And guest role, maybe my dad. I thought oh, he was yeah, pretty funny. Yeah, G- Gracie's dad, he Barry, Australian royalty. Uh, you know, acting royalty as well. Mm. He had mean he, stitches. He was so funny and nerves at the same time. Yeah, because he had to. He plays um, an old man who is uh, slowly losing his um, mind, basically, or, or capacity, and um, and selling Stevie a car. So seeing those two together between takes and, like, you know, the on screen and everything, it was, it was amazing. And actually, Michael, I give Michael Beveridge, he played yeah. the sex shop, um, I think he nailed his guest role. Yeah, he, he, came, he came up with a line which absolutely cracks me up as well. He works in a sex shop and my character comes in, my character and Stevie come in to buy a dildo to try and pass a drug test. And um, and he's like, <laughs> anyway, he's <laughs> like, he's like, yeah, dildo's just down there. Um, uh, prices go in range of uh, girth, smallest to biggest. It's double dong Saturday, so you know 10% that? off. Yeah. It's all that. And he just lists all these things. I'm like, bro, you must have done some serious research to yeah. <laughs> ad lib and line like that. Like, Well, I mean, I'm not sure <laughs> if you know this, Michael Beveridge was like the host of Sexpo. So yeah, so yeah. He, he knows <laughs> he knows his dildos. Yeah, uh, I didn't know that because he was saying he was directing some porn thing the other yeah. day, and I was like, "That was a perfect role for you." <laughs> I, he was hanging out with like one of the world's most yeah, the porn star. famous yeah. porn stars. Yeah, he was showing me. And you know, I don't even video. ask anymore. I'm just like, but, uh, sure. <laughs> yeah, Michael. Yeah. Beveridge. I think when you've got hair that luscious, you can <laughs> you can yeah go straight into the industry. He's got a mo and the big long hair. He's, he's fit for that game. Okay. Um, <laughs> Look, let's step away from porn for a second yes, and sorry. let's bring it back to the other guy. Obviously, I'm really, really excited about this uh, next season. But when we said goodbye to the last season, AJ was not in a good spot. Uh, pretty much the worst kind of spot. Are we going to see a redemption for AJ? Are we going to see him climb up the insurmountable challenges that he had to face in his first season? Um, I think he wants to do that, but I don't think that that uh, will necessarily happen. Um, he tries. Sometimes I think they all take try. Sometimes take a step backwards, take a step forwards, right? Yeah, they all try yes. to redeem themselves or, you know. Um, also, AJ as a character I don't think is necessarily one that you want to see succeed. Mm. Um, I think that you get more from him consistently failing. Um and Stevie is far more exciting to see get her wins. <laughs> okay. You know, uh, that's just like, that's actually more of a technical thing if we we're going to talk about the actual craft of script writing and, and mm. plotting and character. Um, you know, it's, it's really satisfying to not give an audience what they want. Mm. Um, so sometimes you have to make people lose because everyone wants them to to do well okay you know in a moment you give them the opportunity to win the cup and they shank it off their boot things don't sound good for aj <laughs> <laughs> this next yeah. season. there will be no season three for <laughs> no. aj so <laughs> no, he's no, dead no. oh wow <laughs> yeah. you heard it here first uh aj is dead um yeah. uh one last question before i do have to let you go we've been chin wagging for quite some time uh well congratulations uh with your book uh being turned yeah, into a film yeah uh this must be a, a, a total a trip out uh I mean, what does it feel like to have something that you've you know, poured your soul into being turned into a feature-length film? Well, that's like, that's just the, been the dream forever, you know. I mean, having the TV show was, was like something that I've wanted to do my whole life. And so to get that up, that's why I'm extremely proud of it when, you know, when you asked me at the beginning. To do the book into a movie, I started writing the book with the intention of making a movie. So it was really... It's really about challenging myself and trying to do 
trying to put myself out there as much as possible um, and risking a big, you know, big chance of failure in that sense. But mm. you know, you know, I you, I only want to, I only do things if I can try and get something out of them, like you know, gain something, like learn something, or mm. challenge myself. So that's it's just a big challenge, and I'm I, I hope I hope that it that it's that it's worth it. Yeah, definitely. Well, yeah. I just want to say a huge thank you for coming into the Build Studio and. Congratulations for an absolute stellar job. Uh, a huge round of applause for Grace Yotto and Thanks, Matt O'Kine. And of so course, uh, a Stan uh, original series, The Other Guy, definitely worth checking out. Season two coming out December 13. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Thanks, Thank Danny. You. See you guys. Thanks, Danny.